So <laughs> one of the alternatives to the stock, you know, because what do, what do people do in their retirement funds? They usually buy mutual funds or they buy some stock that they like. And uh, from time to time, the stock market has kind of collapsed and uh, the funds don't look that good. Uh, so how often does the, you know, your private money funds collapse? You know, the house didn't work. You lost your shirt. You know, it went from whatever to what, you know, it's like a 20% drop in the stock market. I'm sure something like that must happen in the housing market. So the last time we had a major correction in real estate uh, values of houses across the nation was back in 2008 and 2009. Now here locally, uh, we had a price drop over that period of time of about 20%. But here's the thing with real estate. It doesn't happen overnight. Typically there is a, a time frame of a decreasing in values. So it's for that reason that I practice and I also coach and train my real estate investing students all across the nation that we don't want to, when paying all cash for private money, we don't want to borrow more than 75% of the after repaired value. The reason for that is what I just said. And that is, if there is a downturn in the market and prices are coming down, well, I'm going to be able to liquidate that property long before there would be a reduction in value of 25% of the, uh, of the value of the house. But where I get the 25% from is the 75% maximum of the after repaired value that I'm borrowing. So it, it keeps the private money, the private lenders money conservative. It's a conservative investment and it keeps everybody uh, protected. So you've never had a private money lender that's lost uh, their investment. Correct. In fact, since we've been doing private money, uh, borrowing private money from individuals since 2009, every private lender has been paid exactly what they were promised, uh, nothing less, and nobody's lost money. In fact, they got everything they had coming to them. And the reason that's the case is because of the formula that we just went over. The formula is I'm not going to borrow more than 75% of the after repaired value. Now in this world of private money, uh, we always bring home a big check when we buy a house and that's because we borrow more than we need to purchase it. But remember, I'm not saying borrow a maximum of 75% of the purchase price. I'm saying borrow a maximum of 75% of the after repaired value. So for this formula to work, we're buying houses that are deeply discounted, but the reason they are deeply discounted is because either the seller has got a problem and is highly motivated to sell, or there's a big problem with the house and they don't have the funds to fix it up or whatever, or the problem could be twofold. They could have a personal problem such as losing a job or someone passed away or getting a divorce, et cetera. Uh, and a problem with the property. So we come along with a solution to their problem. And Scott, as you've heard me say hundreds of times, I'm only interested in doing a deal um, only when every, all parties come out winning and they're getting what they want. 